Decal Machine 2 introduces deep trim sheet support, which means not only do you have access to various new trim UV tools, and not only can you use trim sheets to export your assets, but you can now also bring in existing texture sheets, set them up, and then create decals from them. I call this process trim sheet creation, but note that this assumes the texture sheet is finished already, which you can do in or outside of Blender. The supplied example sheet for instance, is built in Blender, but was baked in Substance Designer. How you go about building your sheet, is up to you, and this video covers only the trim sheet creation part, as far as decal machine is concerned. If you want to learn more about building and working with trim sheets, there are two excellent tutorials out there, which I would recommend to anybody new to this workflow. So to get started, go to the decal, atlas and trim sheet creation panel, choose trim sheet, then new, then initialize. This creates an object representing the sheet. If you are still in solid shading, you should switch to material shading now. It's a good idea to pick a descriptive name for your trim sheet. First we need to assign the trim sheet's textures. But before this can be done, you need to tell decal machine what textures you want to work with. And so you need to load all the textures you intend to use. This is essentially the same as you do when loading info decal source textures. You could also manually place the textures you need into this folder. Then just assign the textures to their appropriate slots and note how the sheet's resolution updates automatically. There is only one real texture requirement here. You should have at least one normal map or one color map. All other maps are optional. If you add a height map, you will be able to dial in the parallax amount. Note that if you add color, metallic or roughness maps, your trim sheet materials created from this sheet won't be matchable. The supplied example sheet for instance, doesn't have these map types, and so decals can be matched to materials created from it, like to any other PBR material. I demonstrate this in the trim cut video, so check that out. Also check out the init trim sheet material video and the one for the trim unwrap tool where I show how trim sheet materials themselves can be matched to PBR materials. The final three map types, alpha, subset and material 2, are for the most part only used for decals created from the trim sheet. Although the subset mask can be useful for the trim sheet materials as well. With an alpha map present, you can toggle it on and off, which can be useful for setting up the trims in a bit. Since I don't have a material 2 mask, I'll just skip it. With the textures assigned, we now need to tell decal machine where each individual trim is. And if you want, you can collapse the texture map section now. There are three tools to define a new trim. The first one is the Add Trim tool with the plus button. It will create a new trim covering the entire trim sheet. You can then adjust the trim's gizmo to scale it down and cover only what you want. Also, if you do this from the orthographic top view, you may want to disable the parallax temporarily to avoid the distortion it produces in orthographic viewports. Next there is the duplicate trim tool, which creates a copy of the currently active trim and makes the active one unselectable. You can then drag the new trim's gizmo out from under the previous one. Actually, instead of going to the next trim, let's reuse a part of the previous trim here. You can define overlapping trims if you want, and it's a great way to get more use out of the trim sheet. I'll then just keep repeating this process. Duplicate adjust, duplicate adjust, etc. With trims so close together and sometimes overlapping, you may want to occasionally hide them all and make only one visible at the time. 
You can also use the batch tools to the right to affect selectability and visibility for all trims in the list at once. Since this is pretty repetitive, setting up the next few trims is sped up a bit. Now, decal machine differentiates between two different types of trims. The trims set up so far are all panel trims, which is essentially the same concept as panel decals, so horizontally repeating texture. So I'm toggling the panel checkbox for all of these trims. All the other trims are just normal detail that doesn't repeat. And while you could use the previously used tools to define them, a better choice is the Draw Trim tool. For these trims, it's definitely helpful to have an alpha map and have it enabled. If you use the Draw Trim tool in the orthographic top view, you'll see extended crosshairs, which allow for some more precision. You can adjust the size of the crosshairs by alt scrolling. Here is another situation where you can get more out of the sheet. Including this detail multiple times in the textures may seem redundant, but you can set up two different trims now. Note that the Draw Trim tool will automatically stop at the boundary. Note also that you can snap a trim to the boundary using the small arrow buttons to the side. Sometimes, your trims are packed in a way that the gizmo will partly cover other trims too. This is generally not a problem, but it means the decal created from the trim can't be a simple plane, and similarly once you unwrap a selection to that trim on a mesh, it can't be a simple quad either, so keep that in mind. I will later cut the decal created from this trim, like so. And again, we can create multiple trims from this detail here. If you have a lot of trims in your sheet, you may find it helpful to pin the trim tools to the bottom of the list like this.
Later I will cut this trim decal here as well. Finally, if you have set up all your trims, you can add an empty trim as well. And while this is completely optional, I highly recommend you do it. It will allow you to very quickly unwrap big sections of your mesh to that empty section of the sheet. To make a trim empty, just click the icon at the front. Note that there can only be a single empty trim in the entire sheet. You can also assign names to individual trims by double clicking, but I generally find it's not worth the effort. If you name trims, decals created from them will then also carry that name. Before you proceed, you should now re-enable your parallax again, if you have disabled it previously. Next up is the trim decal creation. So basically cutting the trim sheet up into individual pieces, for every trim you have defined. This may take a minute or two, so you can follow along in the terminal if you want, or go grab a coffee. Upon completion, new decals will show up on top of every trim. These are fully functional decals, you could in theory start using, but they are really only meant as a preview. Now is the time to adjust decals that were created from overlapping trims. You could also adjust the parallax amount per decal now, but it should be perfect already. Although it does work best for square decals, and so may appear weaker on elongated ones. Once you're done, select the trim sheet object again. Everything is ready now. If you are curious you can take a look behind the scenes and check out the instant trim sheet folder. You will find the individual decal textures, the trim sheet textures and the trim sheets data file here. These are the magic ingredients powering all trim sheet features in Decal Machine. To conclude this, we need to create a trim sheet library from this sheet. You should enable this option, if you have edited an existing trim sheet and intend to replace it. Otherwise, leave it off. Note that so far, there is only the example trim sheet in the pie menu. But after we've added the metal sheet, it too will show up in the pie. And again, you can follow the terminal for progress. And here it is. I'm changing the location in the Pi menu by adjusting its position in the list of registered libraries. In object mode, a trim sheet library in the Pi menu acts like any other decal library, and clicking on a trim decal will simply bring that decal into the scene. Note that trim sheet libraries have a small icon in front of their name. Understand that textures for color, metalness and roughness from the sheet have been discarded for these normal map decals. These two are now just subset decals, like any you'd create from geometry in the decal creation panel. Instead of creating a new trim sheet, you can also duplicate an existing one. This may be useful if you reuse a certain trim setup with different trim sheet texture variations.
By default, the duplicate tool will clear out all texture map assignments. But you can also run it with the Alt key pressed, which retains the textures. For instance, you may just want to switch to a different color map, but keep all the others assigned. Since I've created a trim sheet library from this sheet, it is properly stored, and I can now remove this instant trim sheet. To do so I'd recommend to always use the built-in removal tool, which will also delete the instant folder for that sheet. Finally, a third way of starting a new trim sheet is by importing it from its textures and data file. I'm just importing the supplied example sheet to demonstrate this. It's in the trims folder in decal machines assets path. And if you are importing a trim sheet that you want to edit and replace, you should enable this option. You should keep it off otherwise. And you should most definitely leave it off if you import a decal atlas to turn it into a trim sheet. When in doubt, always check the tooltip. All of this should look pretty familiar to you now. Trim sheets and their implementation in decal machine are very powerful. You may even want to consider creating all your decal libraries as trim sheet libraries. It gives you the flexibility of floating decals if you can use them, while also having the ability to cut the trims into the mesh and so be engine agnostic.